Hi, Randy K7AGE. I thought I would do another workbench video and fill you in on the progress that I've made here in the last eh, couple months or whatever. When we last left, I had the bench basically built, but nothing loaded on it. And over the last month or so, I've been collecting things and installing some stuff and uh, making it so now that it's usable and I'm really enjoying having a dedicated workbench again. So let's take a look around and see what I've done. Now one of the things I noticed when I first started using the bench is that the rear part was kind of dark. So I added two strips of stick-on LED lights underneath the shelf here and that's helped quite a bit. Okay, I have the workbench divided into two areas. The area on the right holds mostly the test equipment and the area on the left is for working. On the top shelf on the right I have a uh, old parts drawer that's filled mostly with resistors and some other parts. I'm going to get new parts drawers and reorganize all my parts. So uh, I dragged this out of the basement for one of the projects that I was working on that I needed some resistors. And below the parts drawers I have some test equipment. So on the top here I have a Hitachi dual trace scope. I think it's uh, 50 or 60 megahertz. Uh, that's very nice and small. Below that is a Tektronix TM500 frame with four plugins. The plug-in on the left is a frequency counter, and then the next one to the right is a voltmeter, followed by a function generator and a power supply. And down below that is another Tektronix TM500 frame, and it has two voltmeters on the left, a dual channel 80 megahertz scope, and a frequency counter on the right. Now I've been really lucky. A friend of mine gave me the Hitachi scope. It's something he bought years and years ago and never used it. And he says, you would use this and you know how to use it. So he gave it to me. The TM500 frame below that, I bought this last June up at the Seaside CPAC Hamfest for $90 complete. And the frame on the bottom, I picked up at a local radio club picnic from a silent key sale. And, well, they had a price on that for $20. And let me tell you, a $20 bill flew out of my wallet really fast. Um, I'd like to get an idea how much that oscilloscope costs back in the day. These things were built back in the 70s and 80s. And I know that Alan, W2AEW, would probably know how much that oscilloscope sold for back in the day. And up on the shelf above the work area, I'm basically storing some things, but it includes a uh, Hewitt Packard frequency counter and voltmeter. And at a ham swap, I found these old Heathkit resistor and capacitor substitution boxes. They need some work. I probably need to change out all of the resistors. They're, that thing's probably 50, 60 years old. So something for another rainy day. And across the back wall and the lower part of the bench is where I have a lot of tools and stuff stored. I use one of these Harbor Freight magnetic tool holders to hold my uh, wire cutters and strippers and needle noses and things. So that's really handy. They just pop in there and if I alternate them up and down, I can pack them closer together. So yeah, that's worked out really nice. So here's a plastic tool holder I have. It's holding mostly screwdrivers down through the holes and it's a little shelf for some other things. So I printed out one of these Ohm's Law formula wheels, which is handy to have. And with the pegboard, it's real handy to put a couple uh, pegs in there. That's a handy place to store solder and tape and solder wick so it gets things up off the table. And below the tool holder, I have my soldering iron and a little bottle of water. And it's a Weller WES-51. I've received emails in the past, people wanting to know what I have. And then I have one of these uh, uh, Panavice workbench things, vice, and a little third hand. One of these Harbor Freight magnetic uh, holders where it's handy to put screws and stuff in there that don't fly around. At the dollar store, I picked up these little um, uh, containers. It's real handy just to throw stuff in. My good old trusty Simpson uh, 260 voltmeter and a coffee cup full of pens and uh, pencils. 
a big old mug full of heat shrink tubing. And on the left side I have a cable holder rack and this is where I can hang my short alligator clips and test leads and things. So it makes it right there nice and handy. I also have my K7A GE notebook there. I can keep track of things. And I was at a Goodwill store the other day and they had a whole bin full of calculators. So I found this TI36X Pro in real good shape. All the buttons seem to work. The display is good. $3.99. So now I have a dedicated workbench calculator. On eBay I picked up this voltage reference board from China. It's about $15 maybe. It's built around an AD584 and it has outputs for 2.5, 5, 7.5 and 10 volts and they've measured the actual outputs and printed on the label here what they actually are. So I can use this now to check out my meters and I've just done some quick tests and everything appears to be pretty good or good enough anyway. And it's really handy to have several different devices on the bench to hold things when you're working on a project. Or a pair of needle nose pliers with a rubber band comes in handy as well to hold stuff. On the left end of the workbench I have another one of these cable holders. So this is a convenient place to hang a lot of the test leads, the longer ones and coaxes and USB cables and things. So that's worked out nice to having all those hung there. And on the right side end I have a paper towel holder on the top and I got some pegs on here to hold like my head magnifier and uh, it's a good place for the soldering gun and the hot glue gun. Also hang a flashlight, you always need one of those. Well, I think that's pretty much it for the tour of the workbench. I think I've shown you pretty much everything that I've done so far and it's worked out really nice having the test gear right here when I need to power something. I have a power supply, an adjustable um, plus and minus um, power. It's, it's, it's low current but I have a, another project to help solve that and uh, you know the voltmeters I just grab the leads off the side and hook things up and you know in, in seconds I'm able to run. It's a lot nicer than having to dig things out and set them up and put them away. And one of the things I want to add to the workbench is some dedicated 12 volts. So at HamSwap I picked up a Kenwood, I believe it's a 12 amp power supply, probably for like a 2 meter radio. I think it was $25. Uh, so far it seems to work. And from the Ham Radio workbench guys, George and Jeremy, I've bought three of these little DC power pole distribution board kits. So, and I bought the case from uh, Chris, I believe it is, in Huntsville. So I'll have the power supply probably on the shelf below and one of these DC power distribution panels mounted somewhere back here in the pegboard. So when I need 12 volts at a couple of amps, I'll have something handy. And I'm also going to use it to power my LED lights instead of my bench supply here. So thanks for watching. I uh, hope you enjoyed the workbench. Uh, don't forget you can follow me on Twitter at K7AGE. And if you like this, Please give me a thumbs up and subscribe, and I hope to be back soon. 73 from Randy, K7AGE.